I'm Peg Breen from the New York Landmarks Conservancy. We're at the New York Public Library on 42nd and 5th for another tourist in your own town excursion. Architects Carrera and Hastings created a Bose Arm masterpiece, hailed as one of the most beautiful buildings in the country. The lions guarding the entrance are two of the best known and most beloved statues in New York. The ascending steps create a processional entryway. The facade is rich in ornamental detail, elaborate statuary, Corinthian columns, monumental arches, carved keystones, and intricately molded bronze doors. The beauty, rich materials, and detailing continue inside. Astor Hall, the main lobby, is over 70 feet long, with a vault some 37 feet overhead, all of marble. Grand staircases rise on either side. Given the opulence of the building, there's a moving inscription describing the building's purpose. The library is a gift from the city to be maintained as a free library for the people. An inscription on the floor states that a Lithuanian immigrant was so grateful to the library, he left it his estate so that others could continue to benefit. Off the lobby, Godesman Hall is regularly used for exhibitions. The carved wood ceiling is an exhibition in itself. Octagonal panels contained winged figures, cherubs, satyr masks, fruit garlands, and foliage. On the north side of the lobby, the glorious Lionel Pincus and Princess Furial map division allows the public to view some of the 420,000 maps and atlases in the library's collection. It's the most used public map division in the world. The DeWitt Wallace Periodical Room on the lobby's south side contains wonderful murals of buildings that once housed New York book, magazine, and newspaper publishers, including the long-lost Newspaper Row that once faced City Hall. The third floor contains even more riches. The barrel-vaulted McGraw Rotunda features bold murals by Edward Lanning of mythical and biblical scenes. For more art, the Edna Barnes Solomon Room contains early portraiture, much of it from the collection of the Lennox Library, which was absorbed into the present library. The third floor hallways also feature rotating exhibitions of the library's material. All this leads finally to the Rose Reading Room, a vast column-free space with monumental windows. The painted ceiling of sky and clouds adds to the sense of openness. From the giant chandeliers, to the city seal carved on table pedestals, to bronze railings along elevated walkways, to enriched moldings. The message is that books, learning, and people are important. There's so much to admire and absorb here that you could approach the library as you would a lengthy book, a chapter or a room at a time. Remember, this extraordinary building was created for people to use and enjoy. Be sure and come and take them up on that.